Hey guys, my name is Aaron from Geeky Lemon Development and welcome to our Xcode tutorials. In this tutorial, we're going to be creating our very own image gallery application from using collection views within the Swift language. Now before we jump straight into this, if you enjoy this tutorial and want to further your knowledge and learning ability, why not enroll in one of the many courses we have available on iOS development. All links for these will be down below in the description. But let's jump straight in to the tutorial. In our last lecture, we set up the ability to have our collection view detect the current screen size of our user's device and then perform an action to resize the cells upon it. This is so we could have a very universal looking collection view on all different screen sizes uh, and it just looks really, really good. It's a way that we can have that level of control to make sure that we have the perfect space and the perfect sizes on all different screen sizes. So now we got our collection view pretty much set up universal. We're now ready in this lecture to push to a detail view, ready for us to populate that detail view with the rest of the information, like the name of the big cat, uh, the lifespan that we had set up, even the small little description that we added in, and as well as having the image blow up to be a lot bigger. But before we can do that though, we need to set up our detail view. So we can jump back into our project, get rid of our little debug area at the bottom, go straight to our main.storyboard. So within here, I get rid of our side panel and our little bottom bar there. We're going to add in a brand new UI view controller just here and make sure it's connected to our cell. So bring up our library objects at the top here, and we're going to drag and drop in a simple UI view controller. So this then is what's going to be displaying all the detailed information of the big cat that gets selected by our user. So to be able to get to this view, we need to link it up and connect it to our collection view cell. So click on the cell itself from the objects library on the left hand side. Now either control click or right click and drag it over to the brand new view that we've added in and select the selection segue to equal show. What that does then is creates that little connection. If I select and highlight it, it's now hooked up to our cell. So if I went to build and run then, it doesn't really matter what cell I now select. As long as I select the cell, that should push us to this detail view. That's exactly how it's going to work. So if I select one now, that's created that connection, which pushes us to our detail view. Now granted, it doesn't really do anything. We haven't told it to do anything, but the main thing is the connection works. It's all hooked up. It's all linked up as well. Perfect. So why don't we design the rest of this interface then and get it to pretty much where we want it to be, ready to populate it with the information. So let's go back to the application then. Let's drop this down. Oh, a little debug area there. There we go, we centralize it. There we go. So before we do this though, there's one thing that we need to do and make sure that we've got taken care of, and that is the actual segue uh, that we created. If we bring up our side panel here and go to Attributes Inspector, just like how we originally added to the cell at the start of creating this application, we added an identifier to it so we can reference it and single it out. We kind of need to do the same to this segue. So once you've selected it within the Attributes Inspector, the identifier, I simply name it Show Detail. There we go. This is because we can have multiple segues coming from one individual view. So to give us the ability to reference the individual segues and then perform an action upon it is how we're going to you know, place the information in our detail view in the next lecture anyway. So as long as we've taken care of that, we're pretty much ready to jump in and start adding in our objects. So what we need then is we need an image view and three other labels to display the text information. So I'm going to type in now our image. We're going to add that in. There we go. Space it out so it's nice and big. There we go. It's going to look pretty cool. And what I'll do, I'll simulate having our first image in. Just so we can see what it'll look like. I'll change the, the scale to fit mode here to aspect fill. And because it does display it outside proportionally of the bounds, we're going to clip to bound so it crops it inside. There we go. That's how we're going to have our image be displayed. We also need to add in some labels then. So simply type in label. Uh, add that in, space that one out. There we go. So this is going to be the title of our big cat animal. There we go. Well, I'll do our centralize the text. I'll add a second one in there, and this is going to be our lifespan. And I'm thinking for the actual description, we use a text uh, view. So type in text, drag and drop in a text view, because our text view is going to house a lot of information anyway, so we might as well get it set up to be a text view. And that's going to look pretty cool. 
So this is going to be pretty much the basic interface for this application. We've got the four objects now which are going to be populated from the information within our plist, all depending on what our user selected within the collection view. It's pretty cool, isn't it? So what we do then, we're going to first start with our two labels and get those configured. We'll work with them simultaneously because they're going to pretty much have very similar styling options. We'll uh, change it to a custom font. And I'm thinking we go with uh, the Avenue Heavy, I believe we used for what we placed in the navigation bar. So if we go with that, we'll up the size of it to about 24. I'll change this label here to the same color as our navigation bar. You know, so it's like, you know, you know, it's the title. And then this one here, we'll leave that to be the dark. It's a dark text color. What if I go like dark gray? That should look pretty nice. And then we'll do the same to this. Then we'll make this dark gray of our text view, but I change it to not a heavy font. We'll probably go for like a light Avenue style one. Uh, we could go for like ultra light. That could be a bit too much. Uh, medium could be fine. Or should I just go um, regular? I think we can get away with regular. That, that, that's fine. Maybe change this to regular as well or medium. We'll go medium on that. because It's not as thick that we need it to be. So it looks pretty cool. It looks pretty cool. So we've got that set up then. Uh, pretty much where we need it to be then. We need to add in a bunch of constraints. So first things first, and I'm going to select both of these two labels here. And before we add in constraints, I'm going to make sure that they have a fixated height of, uh, let's yeah, let's keep it 56. So no matter what happens and the screen size changes, gets bigger or smaller, these two objects will remain the same size in terms of its height. Then I'll select all of the other objects together and then pin them to all the edges around. Now the reason I've done that first is so the two other objects will play them off one another, adding those 13 constraints. So it gets a little bit crazy right now, everything resizes, but the reason I've done that is I can now select the cheetah and the text view and give them a constraint to have equal heights. So adding that one constraint there. So what that does then is when the screen size changes, the two labels have a fixated height, so they won't adjust, meaning that the image and the text view need to adjust themselves. Now, by giving them equal heights, it's basically saying if one adjusts, the other one adjusts the exact same way to compensate one another, thus creating the effect that they get bigger and smaller. So if I got a lot bigger, like on the iPhone X, let me uh, zoom out slightly, and got even bigger right now, you can then see how the objects change and get even smaller and smaller. Even to the smaller iPhone, you can see how they look. It's pretty cool, isn't it? So back to our original one then, we'll zoom back in slightly. We're now ready to add all the actions and outlets to be able to control it. But the problem we've got from the get-go right now is the fact that, well, we got a little warning here. That's because we've kind of um, had this resize. Let me quickly update, reset to suggested constraints. Oh, no, let's go back there. It didn't like that one. Uh, we can simply update the constraints. No, it didn't like that. It's every time you resize something, it won't affect it when it comes to building and running. It's more just to the interface. So let me undo to when it was uh, perfectly fine. I think I've gone too far. There we go. <laughs> so it's a little bit, of, a little bit of a bug that you have. Every time you resize the interface uh, in, the, in the storyboard here and you've got like an object inside of your collection view, it goes a little bit funny. It doesn't affect it when you build and run. It just gives you a warning in the project, which can get kind of annoying. So don't worry about it too much. You can always undo and re-add the constraints in. But for the most part, it doesn't affect it when you build and run. So we've got these constraints added in now and we're ready to add in the actions and outlets. But we can't do it just yet because we don't have a class to control this view. So we're going to jump into our project at the top here in the folder and right click it and select new file. We're going to go to our Coco Touch class and to make sure we change it of a subclass from a UI collection view cell all the way to a UI view controller. And I simply name it our detail view controller, press next and then create it. So we've got that in, we'll drag and drop it underneath our collection view cell and then jump back into our main.storyboard as you now need to hook up that new class to this new view. So select the view, click on the file zone and bring up our identity inspector. And in the class here, add in our detail view controller and press enter. That will then hook up that class to this view and we can now add in the actions and outlets. So bring up the assistant editor, get rid of our side panel there. Make sure that it's on our detail view controller.swift there and our space out our outlet section. And we'll start then with first our image view. So drag and drop that over, and I'll simply call it our detail image view. 
connect that up. We'll move on to our label next, which will be our title. So we call it our detail title. Next, this is the lifespan one. Which again, I'm not really sure why I chose the lifespan one. There's so much more information we could have chose from it. So we call it our detail life. And then this one is, of course, our detail uh, description. There we go and connect that up. So we've got the four outlets that we need for the most uh, part now added in. We can close our assistant editor and go back to our standard editor. Now bring up our side panel once more because there's one more configuration left that we need to do. And that is changing the abilities to interact with our text view here. So selected it in the attributes inspector. By default, it's selectable and editable. I'm going to deselect both of those so we can't interact with it. Uh, so our user can't select the text and they can't click on it and start adding in their own text because that would be kind of weird, won't it? We don't want to have that level of interaction on that single object. Uh, so now if we went to build and run, let's quickly see how it would look. Again, it's not populated with information just yet. We're going to be doing that next lecture anyway. But this is to make sure it does look good on the simulator. So if we selected one, loads up the information. It's pretty cool. It does exactly what we want it to do. We can actually still scroll within it if there's more text being displayed in there, which is pretty cool as well. Uh, but that's how we're going to get it all set up. I'm liking the interface so far. It's nice, plain and simple and basic, but it gets the job done. Now, granted, the images don't change because we haven't told it to update just yet. So before we do jump into the next lecture, there's one more thing that we're going to add in. So back into our project, get rid of our side panel there and our debug area, jump into our detail view controller dot swift. Now within here, what we're going to do is add in four variables. These variables that we're about to add in are going to store the information from the plist before we distribute them in the objects. So how it works then is our user selects the cell and when they then before they come to this detail view controller, it's going to take that selected cell and the four entries of information within its item and equal it to the variables that we're about to add in now. This is so then we can take the variables and then distribute their information inside of it to the four detail objects we've just created. It makes it a little bit more simpler, a little bit more easier to control and a way that we can distribute the content evenly within the application. So we type in VAR which is short for variable and we simply call this our sent, uh, we call it our sent data one and we hook this up to being a string and simply end that with an exclamation mark. That's really all we need to do. I simply copy it and paste it in so we got four together, change it from sent data one to two to three and eventually four. Now we're gonna hook up the four information to those four sent datas and then distribute them evenly. And we'll talk more about these in the next lecture anyway as we set it all up. But for the most part, we're pretty much all done, ready to jump into our next lecture. So in the next lecture then, we're going to set up the ability to prepare to segue to this detail view and then to get all the information within our selected cell and our P list and populate the four objects on our view. So we're going to get all that set up within the next lecture.